Hello, hello. Let me know if you guys can see me because my camera uh, is not working. In fact, I'm gonna check my phone to see if you can, in fact, see me right now. If you can, just say, hey, Heath, we can see you in the comments section, please. Bernadette, how are you, sister? Good to see you. It's so funny. Oh, yeah, you can. Oh, wow. My camera, for some reason, is not um, showing me me, but <laughs> by Bernadette's enthusiastic thumbs up, I'm going to assume that you guys can see me. Uh, and uh, what a perfect person to have jump on right now because I want to remind you guys, before we get into the Junk You Should Know show today, and we are talking about joy and play, Bernadette is a fantastic person who embodies the concept of play and joy in what she does, and I love that, and we're gonna be talking about that today. But I also wanna let you know that the December Jump Rope Challenge for Women starts December 2nd, and I'm gonna put the link down below. And I hope that you guys will participate. I look forward to it. It's the perfect time right between Thanksgiving and the holidays in December to do a focused challenge to keep you on track. So I do hope you'll join. And again, the link will be below. Bernadette, I am awesome today. How are you? And thank you for joining me today. We are talking about the wellness connection between joy and play and how joy and play can provide an amazing hack to your own personal wellness and health. And we're going to we're going to dig into that. And some of the content coming today is coming from the Curable course you guys have been hearing me talk about. Uh, that course was uh, life-changing for me. It was fantastic. If you have chronic pain or a chronic condition of any kind, check out the Curable app because they are fantastic. I will also put the link for that down below. But let's talk about joy. Joy is an interesting thing. Joy and play together is something that we seem to put aside as we become real adults and we get jobs and we have children and careers and things that say, oh, play and, and joy, uh, those things just, they're not productive. They, um, I need to do these other things. I need to get stuff done and all of that. And we lose our sense of play. So many people lose their sense of play and they become in a play debt if you will. We're going, to we're going to dive into the whole concept of play debt here in just a moment. But let's talk about joy. Joy is one of the most vulnerable emotions we have because if we experience joy, then we also are acknowledging how much we have to lose. And so that's something that I think some people damp down their joyfulness because they're afraid of the other shoe dropping. They're afraid of something taking it away from them. And uh, that is a really unfortunate thing that we do when we dampen down our joyfulness. There's something called foreboding joy, and this was an interesting concept to me. It's the idea that when we are joyful, the very next thought we have is we catastrophize what could happen. I'll give you an example. I met this amazing man. He makes me really happy, but what if he doesn't like me? What if, what if he breaks up with me? What if he once he sees all my cracks, uh, doesn't want to be with me, right? We start to dissolve that joy before it even happens. But I want to encourage you that if you are someone that practices foreboding joy, that when you are joyful, you um, immediately go to the dark place or you immediately go to where that other shoe is going to drop. Use it as a trigger for gratitude. It's a great, actually, gratitude hack is when we link uh, something positive to something that comes up for us again and again, and, and we can turn it on its head. So when you feel that foreboding joy, when you're like, oh, this is great, but use it as a chance to go, but thank you. That's amazing, even if it's for now. Even if it's not for the future, I'm going to enjoy it and be thankful for it right now. That's a big piece that I took for that. Mary, great to see you. And uh, so the foreboding joy. Now, Back to joy in itself, it's a massive interrupter of anxiety. I suffer anxiety. In fact, I just shared with you guys over on Instagram stories that I've been in a little bit of a dip, I won't lie, uh, partly seasonal, partly some grief that's percolating up for me from the, the death of my mother two years ago, um, and partly the fact that I have people going through tremendous, tremendous trials in their life right now, and that hurts me. I know you guys know that for people that are close to you going through hard times. It, 
hurts. It really hurts. Hi, Cynthia. I'm glad you could join. And uh, But when we practice joy, they almost can't exist together. So when we are joyful, anxiety almost can't get in there and be in there at the same time. And the thing I love about joy is not that it gets rid of our stressful feelings. It doesn't get rid of sort of the things that we ruminate on, but it's a balance, right? And so you, it, the more joy you have, the more it balances the scales significantly. So the more we practice it, the more we find opportunities for it. And this is the coolest thing. Joy actually affects our health from, the, from a physiologic standpoint. We get serotonin dump. We get um, dopamine dump. Our neurotransmitters love joy. They feed off it. And so the more we do it, the more of those hormones we have that make us happy and make us joyful. So it plays on itself. Uh, joy also actually can impact health issues. Depression and anxiety, obviously. Immune system decrease inflammation, pain, and supports longevity. And the studies kind of keep coming out because joy is a hot topic right now because we're like, oh, it's free and we can practice it and it has massive impacts on our health. So yeah, let's learn a little bit more about it. Okay, we're getting to the good part that I'm just so excited about. One of the biggest ways to nurture joy in our life is through play. Playfulness is the greatest way to access joy in your life. But as we said right in the beginning, what happens? Play is not seen as productive socially. If you're supposed to be getting a report done and you're out playing on the playground or walking around the building with a coworker singing songs, your boss might get upset, I think, would be a probability. And so playfulness isn't well supported. And so we have to find ways in our life to support it and to encourage it. And I've even talked to some clients, they, they don't know how to be playful. And being playful actually makes them a little bit embarrassed. In the course that I was taking, we were all on a Zoom call. And our instructor had us do a funny face, like just do a funny face into the camera. My gosh, my, and I'm a playful person. I, my anxiety went up. I'm like, I can't do something silly in front of a bunch of strangers. And it was interesting to see how when we're out of practice with that playfulness, how it becomes a little bit more difficult to, to engage in it. So we have to find ways to do that. Uh, so I mentioned the term play debt. Uh, that is a real term. Many of us are in play debt. Our bodies and our minds require play. And when we don't do it, we're in a deficit and it affects our health. There, uh, my sister-in-law has a son, shout out Jules, and he was um, getting up for the day. They were getting ready to leave. And he was a little bit of a late riser. And he's a, a four, I think. And she, he crawled up on her lap and he snuggled all in. And uh, she said, come on, Jules, you got to go get ready. We're, we're leaving in a couple of minutes. And he kind of like, yeah, yeah. And still snuggled and was watching a, a, one of his favorite shows and <laughs> all of that. And she's like, come on, Jules, you got to go. We got to go. Let's do this. And so he clenches his fist and he walks out of the room and he's like, I just wanted to have some nice time. And so Brent and I always joke about nice time now about like, just like relax, loose, easy time, fun time. We have to balance that with all of the other obligations and roles in our life uh, to make us truly healthy. So I think, <laughs> I think about the nice time story when I've been just working all day and things have been very serious. It's like, I got to have some nice time. I'm going to go out and jump rope or I'm going to go out and just go for a really cool walk. Um, I've done some real work in making a list for myself of what is playful to me? What, what brings me joy? What, what um, play time helps me get light, get joyful, get smiley uh, and like I said before, some of us don't know. Some of us haven't done it in so long, we really don't know. And so that's what definitely we're going to, at the end, that is my biggest challenge to you, is to just, before you go and do anything else, make a list of what is playful to you. And 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 maybe mark next to it, when was the last time you did it? Um, okay, so I like this uh, quote from Lynn Burnett. Uh, she writes a lot on play, and this is very interesting. Listen up, highly playful adults, feel 
the same stressors as anyone else, but appear to experience and react to them differently, allowing stressors to roll off more easily than those less playful. Do you hear that? It means the more playful you are, the less chance stress has to drag you down because when you are playful and you have a light spirit, stress rolls off you more easily. And I, that's a, such a great reminder when things are getting tense or getting stressful to just go, oh, hold on. I'm going to throw on a song and dance. I'm going to sing. I'm going to go draw something. I'm going to do something that's playful to me to just kind of switch that and get those neurotransmitters to drop and to just bring a lightness to my life. So um, I think I covered what I needed to do there. Yeah, play helps us access joy. So sometimes we're like, well, I don't know how to be joyful. I don't know how to just suddenly be joyful. Play is your vehicle. Play is your car to get you there. So how do we do it, right? First, make a playlist. See what I did there? Playlist. I'm a big fan of, uh, for any of you that are old enough who know about mixtapes in the 80s and early 90s, uh, you make a playlist. You make a list of your favorite songs that you love, and then you tape it for somebody, you record it for somebody, and you send it to them in the mail. I'm not kidding, those of you that are under 30. Uh, so you make a playlist. What, what playful things speak to you? I'm going to share mine at the very end, but I would love for you to put in the comments, what is play to you? It is different for everybody. How can you do more of that? That's the question you should be asking yourself. Even if it's just minutes a day, how can you do more of that? And uh, Bernadette Henry is on here. And if you have not checked out her IG or her Facebook, uh, she's got incredible presence there. And she's got the funnest jump rope stuff you've ever seen. That girl has fun when she jumps rope. She has a lot of play in her life. She's a great example to us. Okay, so you think, what did I do? If you're stuck and you can't come up with a list, Think of what did I do to play as a kid? Some of us did not have very playful childhoods. Some of us were burdened with responsibilities beyond our years that caused us to grow up more quickly and there was no time for play. Or there were we had roles and responsibilities that we just couldn't. Or there was enough stress in our childhood that play just wasn't something in our childhood. So if that is you, the next step that you take is look at what other people do. What are other people doing when they're giggling and laughing and seemingly lighthearted and having fun? What do other people do? Okay. And my list. Playing with a pet is one of my favorites, brings me joy immediately, even a stranger dog. I have to actually be a little bit careful because sometimes I approach people's dogs without asking permission because I'm so dang excited to see their dog and kiss him on the face and scrub his ears and do all of those things. And so that is something that really brings me joy. Another one that I thought of that I was just, um, I was like, oh yeah, exploring. Exploring for me is so playful, like, um, Looking, I'll give you an example. When uh, there was a huge storm here many years ago, Brent and I went out and walked. We found, okay, don't report me on this one, okay? We found a condo complex being built. I'm like, come on, I can see an opening. And he's like, no, we can't do that. And I'm like, oh, yes, we can. So we snuck in and we explored all of the different floors and the rooms and what they were going to look like. And that made me so happy. I was super playful. It was fun. Uh, dancing. Um, cooking is very playful for some people if you're not having a deadline or you're not feeling pressured about it. Uh, jump rope for me, you guys know that. Jump rope is one of my most favorite things to feel playful. And honestly, jump rope, because of the degree of playfulness there is with it, has helped with my anxiety condition tremendously. So not only is it a great workout, but I feel joyful when I do it. It's fun. It makes me feel like a little kid. I, I just love it. Uh, laughing with close friends, obviously. Um, that's always a great one. Good belly laugh is playful and joyful. Being a goofball. I'm lucky to be married to one of the biggest goofballs that I've ever met. Uh, my sister Cynthia, who's on right now, can uh, attest to that. He is to the very core, on every cell level, um, playful in nature. And that is great for us. It is interesting, though, during the course, I 
realized, oh, I think I damp down my playfulness a little bit because his is so high and we can't both be court jesters. So, um, or at least that's what I tell myself. So I have noticed that. And Cynthia, maybe you could tell me if that's true, um, that I damp mine down a little bit kind of to balance us out. And so that's something I came aware of. And I'm like, heck no, I'm not going to do that. More playtime for, for me, more playtime. Uh, a playground for me is one. I know it sounds silly, but talk about a great workout. Monkey bars, swings, going down the slide. Like, it, I feel silly doing it, like silly in a good way. And so I find that to be a lot of fun and very playful. Uh, reading or watching something funny. And so uh, that, that to me is kind of playful. It's um, whenever you're laughing wholeheartedly, it's playful. Okay, so I would love to know your examples. So we talked about how joy and play impact our wellness, how playfulness and joy are anti-inflammatories. They boost your immune system. They decrease pain. They can attack anxiety and depression. It's huge. And we need to look at why, if you have, are you displacing playfulness in your life? What story are you telling yourself about that? It's not productive it's silly, it's childish, right? Rethink that, retailor that, because being playful and joyful is one of the biggest impacts you can have on your health. So lastly, I almost forgot to give a shout out to the sponsor that our cha the Change Cave, of course. The Change Cave is a membership group for women over 40. And I was thinking about uh, some of the women in the group and some of the reasons they are there has a lot to do with Either they could not get to their wellness goals on their own, they have tried many things to either lose weight or get fit or create a mindfulness practice or any of the wellness things that we like to do and they've been not successful. Um, they feel like they don't have anybody on their side in regard to wellness changes. These are all great reasons to check out the Change Cave. We're an incredible community of like-minded women, all after wellness aspirations of our own personal choosing, but we do it together. So I'll put the link for the Change Cave down below. Don't forget the Jump Rope Challenge starts December 2nd. You will see registration in the comments here in just a minute. Funny thing, so I'm, I'm coming live and I'm typing like, Junk you should know show, uh, joy and play, blah, blah, blah. And I look at what I've typed, uh, it all went backwards. And I'm like, what the heck? And it's a face, it was a Facebook thing. I Because everywhere else I typed, it was fine. But in the introduction, that's why there's no introduction to the show up above you. Everything was typing backwards. I'm like, how does that even happen? That's just so weird. So I will go back and put a description in as long as it doesn't keep typing backwards. Although it's kind of fun. So hey, shout out to playfulness. Um, I will go back and put a description. You'll see some links. Come back and check out the links in the comments and go and be playful. Do something playful for yourself today. Okay. Love you guys so much. And thank you so much for hanging with me today. I can't wait to see you next week at Friday noon PST where the junk show goes live every week. And then we live forever on the YouTube channel, the well fit and fed YouTube channel, head on over there and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Have a great week and we'll talk to you soon.